point to quickly mention was this interview featured in interview magazine featuring the one and only kim kardashian the reason why i wanted to mention it was you know by mel ottenberg actually let's get give that guy a shout out because he absolutely crushed it when it comes to um putting this together right in terms of the styling and whatnot it looks absolutely phenomenal so kim looks amazing in this um i love the hair i love the blonde eyebrows you know giving me colors of any um vibes i love the americana look with the denim jacket the white top the denim jeans the boots and stuff i love everything about it right it's really really cool and the actual interview itself might be one of her best in terms of her coming across somewhat personable and somewhat unlikable even what i'm going to say next doesn't really make any sense but overall when it comes to this lady kim kardashian and the kardashian fam overall I'm I'm reaching peak levels of like Kim and Kardashian's family overall oversaturation. And the reason why I say this is because I'm somebody that generally doesn't really like when people say the thing of like, oh, if you don't like something, just don't pay attention to it, right? It's generally something that kind of gives me, it kind of just annoys me, that sort of phrase, especially nowadays. Because nowadays there are some things that you don't like that you just can't avoid because other people tend to like them a lot. And the Kardashians are a really good example of it. And a really good example of it would be something like Love Island, which I don't really have that much of a strong opinion about, but I don't watch it. I don't really care for it. But my entire timeline is full of people that watch it. Um, and, and just generally society seems to be big fans of it. So even if you don't like Love Island, you're definitely going to be aware of people that are on it. You're definitely going to be aware of maybe major talking points or just something along with it. There's no way you're just going to know absolutely nothing about it unless you're just not on social media but if you are on social media unfortunately you're going to find out some details about that thing that you don't like and i feel like over the years we've kind of i felt like there's been a ramping up in terms of the coverage that the connections have been getting across many different media platforms which makes a lot of sense god imagine if you own a media platform on the back end this family does generate clicks they do generate engagement. They do kind of drive traffic. And if you do want to give your site a bit of a pep up the step, you're definitely going to make sure you're going to cover what they say. You're going to get this interview dissected. Because I can imagine if you have a platform or a blog or whatever it may be or a news outlet, you're going to take this interview and you're going to dissect little bits and turn them into fully fledged stories so you can increase clicks, so you can increase, you know, the amount of advertising that you get, you know, that you get kind of to, to your site and money in terms of marketing, blah, 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 blah. I get it. It's all a big business. But me, as a consumer me as just a regular average everyday person i'm just tired of seeing their faces i'm tired about hearing them hearing their opinions on life and stuff i just generally don't care and it's not even a thing of like not liking them as people because i don't know who they are i just know what they present but just in terms of even actually diving a bit deep into who they are as people and reading what they say and their values and whatnot they really are the most kind of i wouldn't say reprehensible but they're not the most likable family in the world either. It's not even like they're like generally people that people would say are people kind of like them despite their flaws. You don't like them because of their flaws, right? They have many major flaws, especially the way that they kind of have really elevated, you know, the average beauty standards and then have refused to acknowledge the amount of cosmetic work that they've got done and just spin it in this. It's just horrendous. Everything about it. I can imagine if you have a daughter, how kind of toxic you, you would think this whole entire family is. And one of the things that I found very interesting about the shoot, especially when you can think, think about the iconography of it, right? The themes around it, about being very Americana, about it being, you know, blonde hair you know especially her not being you know a, a, a typical white woman in terms of representing the the kind of new face of america bloody blah 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 the funny thing about this when you search through this article and you search through the word that i searched through when i was kind of clicking on it and you search through work you get 10 instances of work being mentioned in an article and it made me laugh and snicker because it, it made me laugh because and snicker really because I remember I made this point earlier on I think in a stream about how annoyed I was getting at some of these stand-up comedians I was following and their insistence on trying to appear like they're working class trying to appear like they're just one of us one of the regular folks but then also going out of their way to shit on people who work working class jobs who tend to, I think, be the people who make up the majority of their audiences, right? They're the people that go and, you know, get a babysitter to have like a little bit of a date night and take out their wife or their partner to go watch a comedian, have a couple of drinks, have something to eat, get a bit tipsy and come home. But for some reason, kind of comedians kind of look down those people and they kind of somehow want more highfalutin, sophisticated type customers. But that's not what you're going to get. You're definitely going to get people like me and you, right, who are just regular working class people who just want to tap out a couple of hours in the evening. And I feel like the collections have the similar sort of thing, but they try and, um, I won't say cosplay, but they're trying to rewrite the narrative that they've somehow 
you know, got this from the mud, their success and their kind of fame and infamy or whatnot. And it hasn't come through the process of just being very, very privileged and winning the genetic lottery in terms of being born into a family that was already kind of on this ascendancy. And then you get the genetic lottery of looking the way you, you do, you have the access to, you know, improve the way that you do. You happen to live in a country or, you know, to be brought up in an area like California where you, you basically get to indulge yourself in those kind of things. And it just goes from strength to strength. Now, no one's denying they haven't worked for a level of their success. But this kind of overemphasis, I feel like, or this kind of weird, really clever, subtle um changing of the narrative of like work 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 is really interesting right you hear a lot of them talking about working out you talk a lot of them talking about working in terms of entrepreneurship working in terms of having a family working in terms of being celebrity whatever maybe there's a real there's a real kind of conversation around it and even this interview i feel like it's one of the most interviews i've seen where they've ever even spoken or openly acknowledged the this kind of thing that people say running joke of like oh they don't have any talent because now they're trying to twist the talent thing into being, oh, I work hard, so that's also a bit of a talent, which is really interesting. But there's 10, ten instances in this magazine, interview magazine with Kim Kardashian where she talks about work, right? Um, the first one is obviously one of the most infuriating ones ever you can put there because it says the following. Mel Ottenberg says this, I love it. What's your secret these days? You're really, truly, really growing. And she says, oh my God, thank you. No problem. Kim says, honestly, I really take care of myself. I work out. I eat a plant-based diet as, as much as possible i'm not perfect but my it's my lifestyle i feel really good in my own skin these days so maybe that comes through and obviously people have noticed over the kind of recent years that kim has or recent months actually kim has lost a lot of weight right she's clearly trying to change the way that she looks in terms of how she looked before and there's a clearly a stylistic or kind of image kind of change that they want to go for in terms of whatever they're doing in terms of how they build their brand fair enough but there's also this real lack of acknowledgement that the base was always good with them, right? There's pictures of Kim when she was younger, looking incredible, right? Looking very pretty and obviously clearly somebody else going to grow into being a very attractive woman, fair. But let's not deny that there's been some help along the way. And now the funny thing is, is that especially if you read some articles, I've seen some things online, there's been this conversation around maybe Kim and her sister Chloe having gotten a um, a reduction in their bums because obviously they're known to having these kind of crazy donkey bums and having these crazy implants or whatever else they put in there, right, to make them look crazy. But the thighs never match, so they always look really nuts whenever they wear kind of, you know, bikinis and whatnot. And I guess over the years, they've slowly but quietly, they're so, yeah, slowly but quietly removed whatever they put inside there and then decided to work out, which is always a very clever trick when you're doing any sort of cosmetic surgery. If you actually combine cosmetic surgery with actually changing your your kind of diet and your kind of um everyday kind of day-to-day -day life in terms of how you sleep or, you know how much how much water you're drinking and um, the kind of foods you're avoiding you're avoiding not drinking not doing drugs all that good stuff and you're also you know uh, somebody that's kind of you know not shy of going under the knife you can actually get some incredible results and that's what they've kind of done in terms of a hack and clearly it's working for them but again no acknowledgement of that annoying another instance of work while i uh, kim says well i woke up and i worked out and then i dropped my kids at the, at, off the day camp so there's just again insistence of trying to appear as if like you're just like every other mom out there when it's not true we know you have we know you have a million um nannies and whatnot we know you have a bunch of help and we know you have a good support system that actually allows you to do all those things right to actually make those things actually work for you and the thing for me that i've always found that I kind of want to make clear also I've kind of grew up with, I obviously grew up in a very rough area and I didn't grow up with a lot of money myself, but I've known people, you know, along the way who have kind of had the ability to live a somewhat comfortable life. And I don't know what it is that people who come from privilege who have money and this kind of um, insistence on wanting to appear or wanting to kind of sound like you've come from struggle, but then everything about your life is luxury is like privilege is like, you know, indulgence. And I don't really see why that makes sense because if you have the ability to, you know, put yourself through a good if you have the ability to go to a pretty decent university or you, your mom put you through a good private school or you're able to get a good job or you've got good content to do this good content to do that you should take advantage of it because your parents work pretty hard to put you in that position right to kind of afford your life where you don't have to stress too much that's a really good privilege to have you should kind of embrace it 
um, but also kind of make it known that, hey, this stuff doesn't define me and I'm also a decent person because you don't want to be defined by the wealth that you didn't obviously create or anything. And you don't want people to kind of be ascribing you, you know, bits of entitlement or making you seem like you're spoiled. But you also want to make sure that, hey, I'm actually a decent person. This doesn't, this isn't all of it. This isn't everything that I do. I also do this, I also do that. But this kind of rejection of the privilege and trying to appear normal, trying to appear like the everyday person whilst looking nothing like the everyday person is absolutely insane because no other mum who is whatever age that she is can be is able I don't think on a daily basis look like that and also work a nine to five it just doesn't work it just doesn't work out that way it would be nice if they could but it just doesn't work out that way right I continue so yeah so I'm shooting a little content for skins this morning I figured out um how to do some voiceovers on reels then I'm going to record episode of my podcast I'm doing true crime podcast on Spotify yeah cool cool another one because it felt like what she said yeah and then they have a two-day work session and I have to go voiceover so this whole insistence of like breaking down a day and making it seem like hey I'm I'm like you I also have a hustle I'm also doing things I'm also trying to create and strive a better life for my family when really they already looked after but anyway continue another one thing about work look at that work has been mentioned three times on this sentence it's one question it's one answer to the interview kim says this as follows well i'm going to dinner with my sisters tonight so i'm probably going to do that anyway i think i'll always i'll always be working out none of that really has changed me and my sisters always work out together i would be the mum. i'd still work out though i'd probably have a big vegetative resale business or something so this idea that that she would always look again it's very subtle this messaging i'm always gonna i was always gonna look this way because i work out because i work out because i work out yes we know you work out but you've also got a lot of help why don't you want to admit it now on the other end of it it's none of anyone's business to admit anything right it's personal you know medical stuff doesn't need to admit anything but just don't just don't lie you know what i mean don't say anything but also don't lie those are two things. You don't need to say nothing. You don't need to explain yourself to anybody. But also don't flat out lie and, pretend, and pretend, expect us to believe it because we're not. I know I'm not anyway. Another one. Um, work, 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 work. Another one about work. Um, I believe in climate change. Kim says, I believe that anything can help. <laughs> Kim talk about climate change is hilarious. But I also believe in being realistic and think sometimes there's so much to worry about on this planet. <laughs> It'd be really scared to live our life with anxiety. I have super climate change of our friends and I love learning from them. <laughs> Uh, this is like this is like when you say um i'm really passionate about a company you, you remember when you go into an interview for a company you never heard of prior to trying to get a job there and you have to kind of fake that you care about what they do and you're not just there for a check this is what it's kind of this answer sounds like um i have super climate change of our friends and i love learning from them i do what i can but you have to pick and choose what really works for you in your life of course you get to pick and choose we don't another one about <laughs> let's continue <laughs> Let's see some more work thing. Wouldn't that be nice? It says, um, but you are a t-shirt. That's what I want. Sick about it. It's, just, it's, it's attainable. It works. What's attainable? Oh my God. Anyway, um, another one. Uh, cut at work. I have a problem saying no to people. So I hate when people ask me for things. It's like, hey, will you do this work thing? It'll just take two seconds. I'm like, it's not that easy. I'm coming from Calabasas, which is an hour each way. It takes about two hours in glam. So if someone asks me to do a five minute cameo, it's never just that. But all my friends and family, no one really asks me for anything or needs anything. We're just cool. Okay, cool. Another thing. Working with Nadia Cole. So again, I don't know. I, it's I, Like I said, I'm conflicted because I feel like this interview is really good. All right, let's go from the top to bottom, see all the pictures. You see, obviously, a bare buttock there. The interview is really good. She looks amazing in this clothes. I think that's a Rick Owens um, choker in it. I'm pretty sure from the recent season. Is that a Rick Owens choker? Yeah, oh, it's Gucci, actually, not Rick Owens. Wow, okay, I'll take it back. It's just incredible in this, in this flipping um, editorial. Melton Burgers made her look really, really amazing. I love the Americana vibe of everything. I love the brands that are featured. The interview is really interesting if you're a fan of them and, uh, and that whole family. But... I'm just tired and bored and over this entire family and I want it to be over, but I know it's never going to be over. This is obviously an interesting look of the entire thing. I think most of you are aware this is a Bottega Veneta look. It's actually all made of leather. It looks like it's um, denim and obviously a classic kind of cotton vest, but it's actually all leather, which is great. And paired with that little pointy boot is really great styling for Mel Ottenberg. So obviously big up him, but I'm just tired of the family. I'm, I have have reached peak Kardashians over saturation. And I think I'm, I mentioned it all. Oh, that's really Really nice too actually the reason why i mentioned it too is that for me the saturation isn't because i can avoid them it's because i can't avoid them 
like I came across the interview on my timeline because I wasn't looking for it. It just popped up in my time because everyone was kind of sharing the images of her with a bum out. So it's not even like I can avoid it. You can't avoid them. They're always kind of, they're omnipresent. They just kind of exist forever and ever and ever. And people keep feeding into this nonsense. It's just annoying. And now they're trying to appear like everybody else. It's just like, or trying to appear like the normal family. It's just like, come on, man, allow it. But yeah, check it out if you're that way inclined. I'll put the link in the show notes if you are interested. 